Hello, Master Chief. I'm Cortana. Which Halo game has the best Cortana? That is the video we're doing today across all games of the franchise over 20 years. Now, over those 20 years, Cortana has changed quite a lot. Not only her voice, her appearance, and even her personality have changed drastically. I'm going to go through every single Halo game, and I will take into account how much Cortana is actually in the game. This means for games like Halo 3, I'll rate differently than, say, Halo Combat Evolved. Over two decades, Cortana and her partnership with the Master Chief have changed so much through the Bungie era to the 343 games, so let's not waste any more time, let's get into the video. Halo Combat Evolved 2001 Cortana in Halo CE was introduced as almost a British AI, purple in appearance, and had some pretty iconic one-liners to boot. This cave is not a natural formation. In the first Halo game, Cortana acts like a partner, providing tactical information to the player, giving more context to the evolving situation at hand, and monitoring Covenant chatter on their battle net to relay further information to you. Halo C's Cortana is one of my favourite iterations of the character. Something about the first game has a very different feel to it across the board. The gameplay feels different, the characters feel different, even the physics of the game operate very differently to the sequels of the series. Outside of Halo 4, Many people think Cortana looks best in Halo Combat Evolved because of her purple appearance, and I do like that when Chief reaches the control room, she almost radiates to different colors to represent the amount of information she's acquiring in the control room. The anniversary version of Halo Combat Evolved actually uses Halo 3's model, but I noticed during the cutscenes on the Master Chief Collection, the eyes look very weird, the animations and voice are out of sync, and even the angles that should play during the cutscene are broken. 343, you gotta fix that. I always liked in the developer commentary of Halo Combat Evolved, and it was the original story planned by Bungie, that you would return to the control room after facing the flood, and Cortana would have gone insane with power. Now what plotline does that sound like? Either way, Cortana in Halo Combat Evolved is fantastic. Let's move on to Halo 2. Bet you can't stick it. Bet you can't stick it. Bet you can't stick it. I bet you can't stick it. You can't stick it. Not gonna stick. Bet you can't stick it, Master Chief. Halo 2 2004, the sequel that revolutionized online gaming and it turns 20 years old this year. Cortana in Halo 2 has some changes versus the first game. Visibly, she looks updated while still maintaining the purple color, but one of the biggest changes to her character in Halo 2 is the language she uses. The British phrases that were used during Halo Combat Evolved, for example, sod off. Sod off which means go away, have been replaced with a more American-esque character. I apologize, but we're going to have to make this quick. You look nice. Thank you. Aesthetically, I love what Bungie did with Cortana for this game, but I've got to say, the anniversary version is a letdown. The cutscenes look fine across the board, but what happened to the in-game model? Cortana in Halo 2 continues to fill the role of tactical support, and she's almost like a companion for the Master Chief, at least until the end of the game, where she stays behind a high charity. Chief doesn't say all that much in the first trilogy of games, so it really helps that she sets him up for his famous one-liners. Just one question. What if you miss? I won't. They make for a great team. I did always wonder at the end of Halo 2 why Cortana never activated in Amberclad's reactor when Tartarus forced Miranda to activate the ring. You guys can let me know in the comments if there's a particular reason why she didn't. I know there's a popular quote from Cortana that says, For a moment of safety, I loosed damnation on the stars. Which could be translated to, For a moment of safety from the grave mine, she divulged the location of Earth, or she did not want to detonate in Amberclad's reactors as she did not want to die. In any case, Cortana in Halo 2 was great. Next up is Halo 3. You found me. But so much of me is wrong. Out of place. You might be too late. You know me. When I make a promise. You keep it. 
Now, Halo 3 doesn't have all that much Cortana in it, from the KIA overlays throughout the campaign that always annoyed me, to the secret Cortana terminal in the second to last mission. You only really get Cortana back for the final level of the game, and a little bit of the second to last mission, and you actually get to see more scenes of the Halo 3 Cortana model in the Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary version of the game. Regardless of only having Cortana with you for one level, I particularly love the scene where Chief finds her in high charity, and even at the very end when the ring is going to fire and the arc is shaking itself to pieces, and Master Chief is climbing back up to Cortana, that is a truly iconic scene, and Bungie absolutely nailed it. Aesthetically, Bungie changed Cortana to blue instead of the purple from the past two games. I do prefer the purple, but the blue doesn't look bad at all. For a game that didn't have all that much Cortana in it, I thought Bungie really used her well, as the scenes she did have really added to the story and were very well done. Wake me when you need me. Come on, Chief. Take a girl for a ride. This brings us to Halo 4, and I'm just going to say it now, when I asked this question on Twitter and I got over 500,000 views, the majority of people picked Halo 4 as their favourite. Now the main thing people said was that she just looked the best in Halo 4, but one thing I also noticed people pointed out was Cortana's character development. Not only the character development throughout Halo 4, but as the series as a whole. Even when Cortana was faced with her increasing rampancy, knowing in all likelihood that she wouldn't survive, even in the final battle with the Didact, she still went out of her way to protect the Master Chief. For every complaint that people have about Halo 4, Cortana is not one of them. I personally don't think she could have been portrayed any better for this game, and 343 did a phenomenal job. If this was the end of Cortana's story arc, and I really think it should have been, this was a perfect way to send her off. Welcome home, John. And then Halo 5 happened, and I'll keep Halo 5's Cortana brief as I strongly dislike the Halo 5 campaign, and the fact that Cortana was brought back as the primary antagonist of the story really didn't sit well with me. It cheapened her sacrifice, even putting aside her different aesthetic to represent her new commanding role, I just felt it was very forced to bring her back as a character. As I said, I felt like her story arc was completed, and if you wanted to reintroduce a new Cortana, there would have been better ways to do it. It also meant that since Halo 5's campaign was so poorly received, they really wrote themselves into a corner. For many people, this is their least popular version of Cortana, and it really could have been handled better. And this brings us to Halo Infinite. Now Cortana and Halo Infinite can be seen one of two ways. One, as the Echoes told as story points in evil Cortana's final moments, as 343 tries to course correct the series after the blunder of Halo 5's story. Two, the weapon as a younger version of Cortana, a version in which she is the same as the original Cortana, however this version is what she would have been like had she have never met the Master Chief. What I'll say first of all, is the original Cortana sacrifices herself again to try to take out Atriox and the Ring. This is why I said with Halo 4, she already did sacrifice herself, they're just repeating the same thing, but because they wrote themselves into a corner with Halo 5, they had to have some sort of redeeming thing for Cortana to move the story forward. Personally, I'm glad she's gone. She wiped out Doisac, home planet of the Brutes, killing billions. She destroyed countless worlds with the Guardians. What I did like is how they brought back the original purple aesthetic to Cortana. Halo Infinite's art style was fantastic, and this was done very well. It also somehow found a way to fix the awful decision that was Halo 5. Even Bonnie Ross, who was in charge of 343 at the time, said Halo 5 should have been a spin-off title and not a mainline numbered Halo game. I think there's always room to tell other stories and side sure. stories. I just don't think that probably should have been a Halo 5 numbered story. And so I think that it's a, it's a good learning to think about. It's a vast universe and we can tell these stories. So in Infinite will will be applying those lessons. <laughs> <laughs> now I think that like hopefully we do listen, we do learn. So as you can see, in retrospect, Halo 5 shouldn't have been a mainline Halo game, but actually a spin-off title set in the Halo universe. In any case, Halo Infinite's campaign story somehow steadied the ship, solving a majority of the issues Halo 5 set up. And it's a shame Halo Infinite didn't get any campaign DLC, because by the end of the game, Esparza, the pilot, the weapon, and Master Chief seem like a solid team with good cohesion. I always love the scene where Esparza, the pilot, hugs Master 
the chief and then chief asks the weapon what she would like to be called so i'm hoping that whatever halo campaign comes next it builds on this so that's it they're my thoughts on cortana throughout the entire halo franchise i only put the video games in here but i'm sure the extended lore and book fans can weigh in on this as well if i had to pick a favorite it would be halo combat evolved followed by halo 4 leave your comments down below on which halo cortana is your favorite and why i hope you all enjoyed thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys later Here we go. <laughs>